All right, everybody, so welcome. Um, this is the first video uh, where we're gonna be doing a very quick crash course on the essentials of Python. Uh, please keep in mind that this is not going to be a course that will make you a professional developer overnight or anything of the sort. Uh, more what these lessons are gonna be uh, based on is just teaching you the very basic, bare bones DNA structures of how code is made, how it works, uh, we're going to be going over a lot of different things. For example, how to store data in a Python program, how to have code repeat using if logic or conditional logic to make sure that you know things only happen when we want them to. Uh, by the end of this, you will have the skills to create a slot machine in the Python programming language. And you'll be able to create that completely from scratch. And by the end of it, you'll have this uh, working kind of like a bare bones game. And from there, you know, I recommend you start stepping into more advanced tutorials and, you know, stay tuned. I may be making more tutorials, but the main goal of this right now is to just give you a very introductory level to the Python programming language. This is ideal for middle schoolers, high schoolers, or somebody in post-education who, uh, you know, wants to be able to learn how to do these basic things and see if coding is for them. Again, we're not going into something that's crazy in depth. This is for anybody of any level. Uh, as long as you have a basic sixth or seventh grade mathematics understanding, you should be completely fine. So with that in mind, let's just dive right in. All right, so we are at the python.org website up here. Uh, this is just the website where you can download Python and install it on your computer. I'm gonna click on download over here, Python 3.8.1. Let's grab that. All right, so uh, we're going to talk about some information. The first maintained release version of 3.8. Sure, sounds good. Let's find the download. There we go. Uh, let's see, Windows x86-64 executable, uh, executable installer. Let's go with that. All right, and if you have a newer version of Python, that's fine. doesn't really matter. We're going to download it. All right, it's completed. Let's open it. And we're going to install Python onto our computer. Let's click install now. It's going to prompt for a password. Give me one second. ABC123. Just kidding. Okay. Uh, hopefully that recorded. It probably just gave you a blank screen. It's just you need to approve. I don't run the administrator account on this computer. Neither should you. That's a big cybersecurity no no. Um, while this is installing, I'll talk about that. If, for whatever reason, your computer does become infected by a virus and you're in the administrator mode, well, that virus now has administrator privileges. You don't want that. Uh, so that's kind of something to keep in mind in terms of, uh, you know, just maintaining things on a computer. If you want to be more well-versed in technology, I definitely recommend you follow that step as a first step of many. All right, everything's being set up. We don't need the website anymore, so we'll go back to our black background screen because uh, it's a little better than the matrix background that I was thinking about using. All right, we are installing everything. Setup was successful, beautiful. We'll click close, and we don't have Python yet. Um, we do, we just need to open it up. So that was the first piece. I just wanted to make sure it was installed. If I click on the start menu and I scroll down to P for Python, there it is, Python 3.8, and we have this item called idle. We're going to be working almost strictly through idle as our first thing that we launch, so let's take a look at it. All right, so we have uh, Python 3.8.1 shell, and um, this first example, we're not so much going to step outside of the shell. But in general, when we make a program, we're going to go to File, New File, and that's going to give us this completely blank window so we can start writing our code from there. But for now, we're just going to do a couple basic, basic things into the shell option just to get some basic words and things started. All right. So when you are trying to write code uh, or trying to learn to write code for the first time, back in the days of the internet, um, you know, early internet, like early 90s, people were very excited to make like their first website and open it up to the world. So they wanted to say hello to the world. So we're going to do that as our first example, just to make sure everything works, just to make sure Python is running nice and smooth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type print parentheses quotes, hello world. 
end my quotes, end my parentheses. And notice how that whole thing highlighted to show that we closed off our parentheses. That's one of many features that's going to come in a lot of handy when we get into more complicated types of coding. All right, when I press enter, Python's just going to respond with hello world. Okay? Uh, I can print anything I want. Coding is fun. And my quotes and my parentheses. And I can get Python to respond. All right? So this is just our first kind of lesson, making sure that things can run. Uh, but for the sake of exploration, let's go back to making that file new window. Because what I have on here is, let's say this is my first couple lines of code. Let's say I next decide to print, um, coding is awesome, but I added two E's and I accidentally submitted my code. Uh, I gotta go back and change that. I'm a perfectionist. I'm not allowed to have a spelling error anywhere on my code. So I try to go back and I try to press the escape button or the backspace button and it's not letting me change anything. This shell is more of like where our results windows will show up. So uh, I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but the one thing that's not very good about this is we can't go back and delete things. So we would have to rewrite it. So print coding is awesome. Now that's fine and all for one line of code, but what if all of a sudden I have 300 lines of code and I make a mistake? That's not going to be very good. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go to File, New File. All right, and now what this will allow us to do is write our program, print, hello world. And now I try to press enter, it doesn't run. But what's cool about this is I can run more things. This is line two. So now I can run all of my code as spread out as I want. Uh, this is line three. Let me change that. Uh, we'll leave it now for the example. All right, now in order for me to get this code to execute or to happen, first off, let's close out this. We don't need this stuff. All right, I'm going to click run. All right, and then run module up here at the top. What this is going to allow me to do is make my program happen. So I click it, it's gonna say, hey, you gotta save. Okay, well I think that's a good idea to save. Now we can start saving our program. So when I click this, all right, I'm gonna choose where I can save it. So right now, I'm gonna save it to the desktop. I'm gonna make a new folder, programming projects. That way I have this nice folder uh, already contains a folder. Oh, I guess I won't be naming it that. Why don't we name this uh, My Python Files? I can't believe I didn't even notice that. My Python Files, I'm going to go inside of there, and now I can save my code what, as whatever I would like. So why don't I save this as Exercise 1.1? That way I can start naming these based on how I run these, and I can also provide all the exercise files to you if you need them. I'll click save. And now that idle or that shell popped up. So I have that hello world. This is line two. This is line three. Now again, I made a mistake and I need to fix that. I can't get rid of it. I can't remove it. But if I go back to my code, I can alter it here. And if I run it now, I'm going to run, run module, save the changes. Now I get my new results with this whole restart command showing my code happening. All right, so um, this is the basic idea of how we are running our code. Uh, now we write all of our code as an actual Python file, so I named it exercise 1.1. When I run it, it will actually run all of the commands for my code. Sometimes people will make this mistake where they click file, save as here. This is not your code, these are your results. Uh, you don't want that. You want the DNA or the source that makes your code run. If you just save the results here, you're not going to have a good time if you need to go back and modify your code because you're going to have to rewrite it entirely. All right. So uh, that is our first little example. I'm going to just spend a few minutes playing around with this, showing you some other neat things. And then we're going to call it a day on activity 1.1. So one thing you can also do is print parentheses with nothing in it. And you can even put a space in it if you want. If I run this now, 
run run module. Now I was able to space them out. So even something like a print line, like on here, it basically has you skip a line or print a blank line when you want things to be displayed. All right. What we can also do, nice little trick, uh, print hello world in quotes and then dot, I think it's upper with parentheses. Let's see if that works. Run module. Okay, there we go. I got the hello world in screaming mode in all capitalizations. All right, what I can also do here is dot lower. And let me make some of these letters in all capitals, just because I would provide a better example. This is line two, but it's dot lower. If you can see what upper did, you could probably guess what lower does as well. Let's try running that. Okay, this is line two. It all got lower cased or dropped in capitalization. And I believe the last one is with title that I'd like to show you. All right, and I'll try running that. And let's see what we get. Oh, invalid syntax. That's because I forgot the dot. Nice little thing. If you mess up, Python's going to tell you, hey, something's wrong with this. Now, I see that T is in red. That doesn't mean that I am going to delete the T. A lot of people have this idea where, oh, if it shows up in red, Python's just saying I need to delete it. That's not the case. So just make sure that when you do this, uh, you are mindful that alerts are meant to show you that this is where the error happened, and this is like the error is usually surrounding it. Usually when it encounters an error, it means you need something before it to be fixed. So I'm going to add a dot there, because that is how you convert it into lower. Oh, and you can also see a bunch of here things here, capitalize, case fold, center. I don't know what all these things do, but there's a lot of options. Um, Maybe we'll have to spend a day exploring those. Run, run. And then this is line three. It got titled like a book would be titled. So capital T, capital I, capital L. All right. So um, that's pretty much it for piece one. This is the introduction to installing Python and also to uh, just getting our print statements to happen. All right. One last thing I wanted to add. Um, we have this number sign, or the hashtag, as the uh, younger viewers may call it. My age is definitely showing. Uh, the technical name is called an octothorpe. All right, but we can write whatever we want in here. So say hello world in all caps, and I can add these things. This is called commenting our code. Say a phrase in all lowercase, and then title it like a book, okay? So this allows us um, to basically just go in and add extra pieces of code or commented information to our uh, assignment or to our coding. Uh, this is called commenting your code. All professionals do it, or at least the professionals who care about having a consistent and uh, followable work, because if you're writing five, 600 lines of code, there's no way you're gonna remember all of it. And also, what if your project moves on to the next person? How are you going to make sure that they can understand what you've written? Well, it's a good idea to get into the habit of using commented code. Do you have to comment everything? No, but you should be commenting things that may get a little complicated, a little tricky, or just something if you look back on three years, you're not going to say, oh, who wrote this garbage? Oh, I did. Uh, I wish I had commented it so I could remember how I was thinking when I saw that. All right. Uh, so uh, the last thing that I'd really kind of like to go into is some quote unquote assignments for you. All right, so uh, let's put that in because what I write here as code doesn't really matter uh, in terms of executing the code. So one, uh, make three different print statements. Uh, number two, explore the additional options of upper, lower and title and number three if you're feeling adventurous uh, so I'm gonna put this as number star three as like it's kind of like our difficult piece um, explore additional tags we can add to print statements all right uh, I'm gonna be honest I'm not a hundred percent sure how to look those up but if I print test dot and I let it sit there for a second 
There we go, they drop down. So if you wait a few seconds, you'll see all these different options. So I'm just gonna try center. I don't know what I'm doing, so we're just gonna hope that this works. And if it doesn't, well, I don't know. I'm looking like a fool in front of you. Oh, center expected at least one argument. So it looks like that didn't work. Okay, well, um, let's see. Mike's preceding arguments as positional only return a centered string of length width. I don't know, let's do five, because that's always the answer, right? Let's try running that and see what we get. All right, so I got test. Uh, looks like I got spaced forward a single space here, which is kind of weird. I'm not 100% sure what this is doing. So my suggestion is to play around with these and see what you get. Ooh, there we go, I got some progress, okay. Uh, looks like you just needed to push in a little bit further on there. So. Again, this is how you learn things. You try things, uh, but also what's nice is when you put in a set of parentheses, it'll give you the information of things that you can type in. Also, don't be afraid to jump into Google. Uh, that's a great way that you can jump in and have some fun with this. All right, so anyway, uh, those are your three assignments. Do some exploration. If you find neat things, please do post them in the comment section. I want this series of videos to be something where users can comment and communicate and collaborate and build cool things inside of the comment sections of the videos. Um, I just think that would be a cool thing so you can help each other out and also people are going to find things that I had no idea even existed. I am no like absolute expert in Python, but I am really good at teaching you the basics because I've been doing it for over 10 years. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this first piece. Again, I always like criticism and comments and support and ideas and things that you discover. Toss them in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to participate with you as this course develops. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. This has been lesson 1.1. Uh, stay tuned for our next piece. I believe what we're going to be looking at next is a little bit of how the mathematics of Python works. So anyway, looking forward to seeing what emerges from this course. And thank you very much for joining me. Have a good day.